Howdy there folks and welcome to Bullets for Bucks. My name's Steven and today we're gonna do a thorough review of the new Remington Model 700 ADL. And ADL stands for Average Deluxe. Hmm, I'm not sure if that was the best marketing abbreviation. But anyway, uh, it's basically their budget offering in the Model 700 series. So basically a rifle that uh, includes the Remington Model 700 action. All right, later in this review, we will be taking it out to the range and actually seeing how it performs. First of all, it comes with about a one inch thick soft rubber recoil pad, pretty unremarkable. Polymer stock on the cheaper end of the spectrum for sure. Um, and a sling swivel stud, relatively traditional comb, traditional uh, basically grip right here, some knurling in the plastic so it's easier to grip. And then it has a plastic trigger guard and no detachable magazine, no hinged floor plate. Come on, come on Remington, what are you thinking? This is insane. It's 2023 right now and you're selling a rifle for this cost that doesn't have a hinged floor plate or a detachable magazine. Big fail there. I don't care if it's a budget 700. That's unacceptable. Comes with the Remington proprietary trigger right now, but it's very important to note that they're going to be doing a major upgrade to all 700 series rifles, and they're going to be putting Timony triggers in them. And that's one of my biggest complaints about this rifle, which we'll get into later. So that's a huge upgrade, and I got to give my hats off to Remington for doing that. Because this trigger, it's a single stage, it's hideous. Curved trigger blade. Right now, we can test it with my Wheeler trigger weight device here. And our trigger scale. It broke at 4 pounds, 12.6 ounces, and about 50% of the time. And it's extremely heavy. I adjusted it as much as I could, and it didn't make any difference. Coming forward, you have the famous... Uh, Remington receiver it has a 90 degree bolt throw. Um, I believe this is brazed on, but I'm not sure. Knurled bolt handle. It does come with the in the trigger guard uh, bolt release. It's a little tab here on the bottom. It's got two locking lugs, a plunge rejector, and the Remington style uh, circular extractor. Um, also major issues with this extractor style. I like Sako and M16 style extractors better. Mm has some uh, jeweling on the bolt, but it's kind of a, a rough jeweling job. That being said though, the action is pretty smooth. Not as smooth as a Tika, but you know, comparable maybe to a Bergara. Not bad, not bad on the smoothness of the bolt riding in the receiver. And the bolt lift on it, not, doesn't feel bad. Coming forward, you have a relatively slim profile foreend cheap polymer stock. It's not fiber reinforced from what I can tell. Um, and then you have a front sling swivel stud, but no uh, spot bedding and no aluminum bedding block, nothing like that. Really, really cheap stock. Does have some reinforced ribbing throughout the, uh, the front of the forehand here. Um, the barrel does make contact with the barrel channel of the stock on this rifle. And uh, once again, unacceptable. Coming forward, you have a 24-inch barrel on most of the ADL models, but you can get it in a compact version with a 20-inch uh, barrel. No threading on the end here, and this appears to be a pretty low, light profile uh, barrel, maybe like just kind of pretty much completely average in its contour. The Remington 700 ADL is available in tons of different caliber options, but none of the PRCs yet that were introduced by Hornady. So not 6.5 PRC, 7 millimeter PRC, or 300 PRC. Um, the overall length on these varies from 43 inches and 5 eighths to anywhere, I think, believe to 46 um, inches and one half. The length of pull on all these is 13 inches and 3 eighths. Receiver and barrel has a matte blued finish to it. And I gotta say, you sweat on these and they rust quick. So not the best finish on the market in my opinion. In 223 Remington, this has a mag capacity of five. 
in short action regular calibers like 6.5 Creedmoor, it has a mag capacity of four, and in Magnum, it has a mag capacity of three rounds. The weight on these vary anywhere from seven and basically a quarter pounds to seven and a half pounds. The barrel material is carbon steel, and it does have 5R rifling. This one happens to be chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, it weighs seven and one fourth pounds, and it has a twist rate of one in eight. The receiver on this overall, I do like as far as its design with the recoil lug. It does have that recoil lug sandwiched between the barrel and the receiver. It's a nice, decent sized recoil lug that sits into a recess in the stock. It's not my favorite, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, I prefer it actually over Tika's um, recoil lug, but I prefer like Howa's recoil lug or the uh, Mark V from Weatherby more. All right, folks, so I got to say, I was kind of shocked and actually very impressed uh, with this rifle at the range. It ejected, it extracted, it fed, it did everything fine. Not quite as smooth as a Tika, but definitely very, very well. Um, the trigger, on the other hand, was horrible. Creep, over travel, extremely heavy. I'm going to be super excited when they upgrade all their 700s to those Timony triggers. Um, also unimpressed with the inability to dump the rounds out the bottom via a hinged foreplate or a detachable magazine um, and having to feed them in the top and then if you get a double feed it can be really difficult to get that out. That being said, it shot lights out. I mean it easily shot sub M away out of the box with factory grade ammunition. So using the Hornady ELDX 143 grain factory ammunition easily shot sub, away, sub M away consistently and is a very accurate rifle. The thing I gotta say about this is people will say, well, just get it, upgrade the trigger, upgrade the stock, and then you got a great rifle. What are you complaining about? Well, if we go down that path, we can get in the weeds and argue that pretty much any rifle can be good, given enough work on it. But that's not what we're looking at today. We're trying to look at a fair review of the rifle in its factory configuration. And I gotta say, the trigger's unacceptable, the stock's unacceptable and flimsy and cheap, and not having a hinged floor plate is unacceptable. And in today's market, not having it come threaded is unacceptable. There are a lot of offerings on the market at the same price point of this rifle that come with a threaded barrel, a hinged floor plate or deta detachable box magazine, and real metal bottom metal, and even stocks that are reinforced with fibers. So putting a Timney trigger in this is a step in the right direction but you also probably need to add a box magazine, a hinged floor plate, free float the barrel, and thread the barrel itself. And you might say, well, that's what the other models are for, like the BDL or so on. Okay, but if your base model of your mid to high tier offering isn't that good, it does reflect negatively on you in a competitive market. Overall though, shoots fantastic. We'll be dropping it into a GRS work stock and doing more videos on it in the future. Thanks for watching Bullets for Bucks. Check out this next video and subscribe.